Hey guys, Alton here. Glad to have you here. So today's video is going to kick off our series on learning Linux fundamentals for ethical hacking. So what are we going to do in this first video? Well, I'm going to walk you through the very simple process of getting Kali Linux installed on VirtualBox as a virtual machine on your computer. Now I'm going to do it on my PC, but the process is very similar on a Mac as well. So let's go ahead. Let's jump over to my PC and let's get started. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, before we walk through the install process of getting Kali Linux installed as a virtual machine, I wanna walk you guys through actually what a virtual machine is. So what you see here on my screen is a secondary monitor on my Windows 10 system. So if I minimize everything here, you're gonna see the Windows 10 background and it's simply just me in Windows 10. Now I have Oracle VirtualBox open and I already have a virtual machine instance of Kali Linux installed on this machine. So what is a virtual machine? Well, we install software that is called a hypervisor, and that's what VirtualBox is. It's nothing more than a virtual machine manager, and what this allows you to do is install virtualized operating systems on top of your host computer. So this is running on top of Windows 10. So I can install, for example, an instance of Windows 10, an instance of Windows Server 2016. I can install another instance of Linux, and I can run them all at the same time on top of Windows 10 if I have enough resources on my PC, meaning my CPU is fast enough, I have enough RAM, I have enough hard drive space, etc. And what we can do with a virtual machine or multiple virtual machines utilizing VirtualBox or similar hypervisors is we can put them in an internal LAN which we call a sandbox testing environment and we can use that to learn ethical hacking safely where they're on their own internal testing virtualized LAN where we're only utilizing the virtual machines and we're not actually targeting actual host systems in a host network. So that's the whole purpose of, of actually setting up VirtualBox and going this route. And you're gonna notice that if I click in here, it acts and behaves just like it's a real operating system. Well, because it is. And if I go ahead and make this full screen, if I go into terminal and I do print working directory, or if I do an LS command, an example, this is a full-fledged operating system. And I just wanted to show you that. So let me go ahead and shut this down for now. And let's talk about the first step. So the very first step is to install VirtualBox. So let me go ahead and close out VirtualBox and I'll go ahead and open up Microsoft Edge. I'm going to search for VirtualBox and it auto completed for me. So we'll click on here and you're gonna wanna go to virtualbox.org, go to the downloads page and then just simply download the appropriate install file. So on a Windows machine, it's going to be the exe. On an OS X machine, it's going to be the DMG file. And just go through the install process. And it's very simple and straightforward. Just use the standard settings on the Windows system. And on OS X, if it asks you for install settings, just go with the standard settings. Once the install is done, on your system, you're going to see that it's installed. So on a Windows 10 machine, you're gonna get this icon. On OS X, you may have to search for it. Just search for VirtualBox for the application, open it up. And when you open it up, um, you'll get something like this, but it'll be blank. This right here is my virtual machine. They'll be listed on the left. And ignore these, these are snapshots. We'll talk about these later in the course or maybe other videos. So. Once we have VirtualBox installed, we go ahead and close it for now. I'm gonna go back to Edge. The second thing we need to do is download Kali Linux. Now there's a traditional way of installing an operating system by utilizing the installer file, which is an ISO file, or there's an easy way, and the easy way is to import it, and that's the route that we're gonna go. So let me show you how that works because I've already downloaded the files. So let me go ahead and open up my PC and let me go to my virtual machine SSD. It's called an OVA file. And with an OVA file, if 
you click on it, what happens is VirtualBox opens and it asks you how you want to import this virtual machine. You click import, it imports it, and then you're all done. You don't have to go through the actual install process that you would traditionally do with an operating system. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to get this file. So let's do a search. So let's go to home. Let's do a search for Kali Linux. Now, you can click on kalilinux.org or you can go to Offensive Security's website. I'm going to go to the first result, which is kali.org. And you're going to go to the downloads page to download Kali Linux. And what you're going to look for is you're going to look for the VirtualBox Kali Linux. It's going to tell you that it's available on Offensive Security's VM download page. Click on there and scroll down. And we want to choose the one here that says VirtualBox Images. Now, I did have some issues with this. Um, we'll just simply call it an accordion. I believe this is probably in CSS. I had issues in Firefox and Chrome and got it to work on this system with Edge. So if you're having issues with one of your browsers, just try another one and it'll work. You have two options to download it. You can either do the standard HTTPS download. You'll notice down at the bottom left, the download says the .ova file, or you can do the torrent. I found that the torrent is a lot faster, but you do have to install a torrent client. So if you click here, download it, what I found is that it was going to take almost an hour. Um, servers might have been overloaded. You will notice that it is 3.1 gigs, so it's pretty big. But with a torrent, it's a lot faster. And so with, with the torrent process, what I did is I downloaded uTorrent. So simply go to their website and let me just type in uTorrent. I'll just simply go through this process real quick. You don't have to do uTorrent. Um, and click on Windows if you're using Windows. If you're using Mac, you can do that. I clicked on Windows because that's what I have. Download it and do the install just like you would with any other software. But just be careful when you do this with the free version. It's going to ask you to potentially accept other additional software. Make sure you don't accept that if you don't want that stuff on there. Once it's installed, it's going to ask you to set the preferences for torrent files. Say yes, that way torrent files will automatically open in their software. And what I have in my downloads page is I already downloaded um, in these torrent files. So if I go back to here and I click on this link, you'll notice that it has the .torrent file. And here is the .torrent file for the 32-bit. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is you need to download the version for your operating system, whether it's 32-bit or 64-bit. So just simply download this torrent file. So right-click Save As um, and download it as a download. I already have it downloaded, so no need for me to do that. But once you go and have it downloaded, you'll have the torrent file here. And you'll notice that I have one for the installer and I have one for the virtualbox.ova. So I'm actually going to delete this one because we're not going to go through the actual full install process. We're going to do the OVA. You'll notice that this has the icon link for uTorrent. If it doesn't, what you can do is you can open up uTorrent and then within uTorrent, you can actually browse for the file. But if this has the icon for it, you can simply click on that. And if I go back to uTorrent, it's going to tell you here's the two different files and ask you where to download it to. Click Add, and it's going to start downloading it. And the download process is going to be pretty darn quick because with Torrent, multiple people are seeding it. So you can download it from multiple different sources at the same time. And that's why I went this route because look at the speed. It's downloading over three um, gigabytes in well, actually, probably less than four minutes at the speed that it's going. So that's my recommendation. I mean, now we're up to 10.6 meg megabits per second, and it's downloading it to my download fold folder into an OVA folder. And once it's fully downloaded, it's going to be roughly 3.1, 3.2 um, gigabytes, and then it's going to have the hash file for you to compare it as well if you want to compare it with the hash file to make sure it doesn't have any malware in it. So I already have this downloaded. So 
I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel out of here. But if you let this run all the way through when it's done, it'll let you know. And you can go to your downloads folder or wherever you chose to download it and your OVA file will be there. So let me go ahead and stop that because I don't need that at this moment. Let me close this out. And now let's walk through this process. So I moved this file, this OVA file, and moved it from my downloads folder to one of my other hard drives. And so you want to get to this OVA file. And like I said, it's going to be in a folder. So go ahead and open it up. If you want to, you can do a checksum. So look for um, a SHA-2 compare. So you can compare this to the hash if you want to. Um, that's up to you, but I'm not going to do it in this video, but it's always recommended when you download uh, from the internet. Now the process of importing this is very simple. Just double click on this. And like I previously said, we're going to just go through this simple process. And what you can do is you can scroll down through here. If you want to change the name, you can change the name. You can keep all this as it is and you can change some of the settings in here. Other ones we'll have to go in and change them afterwards. But you don't really need to touch anything. The only thing is if your base machine folder where you're gonna store the virtual machine and all the associated files, if you wanna move it to a specific hard drive like I have here, you would change that here and you may have to change it up here as well by clicking in here if it doesn't make uh, the change up here when you make it down here in the bottom. So the reason that I moved it to my F drive is because this is a solid state hard drive. I don't want to run this off of my traditional hard drives because they're slower, but that's just my personal preference. You could run it off of any location that you want where you have the space. And if we scroll up, we can just double check everything to make sure it looks good and simply just click import and click I agree to their policy. Let it do the import process. It's gonna take a little bit of time, not too much. Once that's done, we'll be finished. It's gonna show it up here and then we'll go ahead and we'll run it. So I'm gonna pause the screen and then once it's done, we'll be back and this will be completed. All right, so the install process is just about done. So we'll go ahead and we'll wait for this to finish up. Now, while this is finishing up, I'm gonna tell you right now what the default login is for Linux. And it's gonna be for a lot of distributions. Um, the username is gonna be root and the password is gonna be root backwards or simply just Tor, T-O-O-R. So here's our install. We can start it up or we can go to settings. I recommend going to settings first, so make sure that you're highlighting on it so it's dark blue. Click on settings over here. And what you can do, so this is gonna be based off of your system, based upon how much space, how much um, RAM you have, how many cores your CPU has available. You can tweak some of these settings. So if we go to system, you're gonna notice that this gave this only two gigabytes of RAM. I recommend increasing it if you have room. Now my system has 32 gigabytes of RAM, so I'm just gonna double this. I'm gonna increase it to four gigabytes. Um, the whole thing is you wanna give it a fair amount so it runs fast, but you also have to keep a certain amount for your host system. And also when you're working with something like this, you're typically get, typically gonna have one or two other virtual machines. So you're gonna have to allocate RAM to them as well. Now, if we click on processor, we can assign it additional cores. So instead of two, I'll go ahead and just give this one four as a demonstration. I have 16 cores on my PC and acceleration should be set up for its default. Don't need to touch that. The storage is fine. If we wanted to add a secondary hard drive, we could, but we don't need to. Um, and we don't need to touch anything else in here right now. Everything else should be fine. We really just wanted to go into system and we wanted to go into the processor area and the motherboard area for the RAM. So hit OK. So once we're done with making our setting changes for our virtual machine, we can go ahead and start it and test it. 
Now, while it's starting up, you don't have to do anything. Just let it boot up all the way into the login screen. If you want, you can click on this menu, but it'll disappear in five seconds. And you wanna click on the first option. Now, while this is booting up, I do wanna clarify the login for Kali Linux. And let me go ahead and open up their website. So for previous iterations of Kali Linux, the username and password is root and tor. And let me actually just zoom on in on this a bit more. So in previous iterations, going back to their 2019 edition and older, the default username is root and the default password is tor. And the reason I'm telling you this is because I thought that it was root and tor for the latest edition because I have 2019 installed and I don't have 2020. This is the first time I'm downloading the 2020 edition and I found out that they changed the username and password simply to Kali in Kali. Now, the reason I'm telling you the old password and letting you know that you're still gonna wanna know this is because you may find a custom OVA version that is running off the 2019 edition. In one course that I'm taking on Udemy, utilizes a custom OVA that I imported and the username and password is root and tor. But if you're downloading the newest version, just make sure that you use Kali and Kali. So let's go ahead and let's log in. So Kali for the username and Kali for the password, go ahead and log in. And depending upon how fast your system is, this may be very quick. If your system is a bit older, this may take some time. Just let it go ahead and boot up. And let's go ahead and just make this full screen. And what you're gonna notice is here's our menu over here. And you're gonna notice that this looks a bit different than the version that I had running at the beginning of this video because, well, that's running on an older edition of Kali, but it's perfectly fine for my needs. So. There we go, we have this installed successfully. Now I know some people run into some issues shutting down a virtual machine. They wonder, how do you do it? Well, you do it just like you would with a normal system. And let me get out of full screen mode. And on Kali, it's gonna be over here in the top right. Click on log out, and then just to choose shut down. Now some people like to simply just click here you don't wanna do that. It's simply like unplugging the power cord on your actual PC. It's not good for the operating system. It doesn't allow it to shut down cleanly and it could cause some issues with it. So simply just go to here, click shut down, wait for it to fully shut down. And before we end the video, I do wanna do one last thing. This is what I like to do for all my virtual machines. Once I install it, I like to take what is called a snapshot. And a snapshot is a way for you to move back in time with your operating system. So you can move between them when you make configuration changes. And it's nice because for example, with my other one, I have multiple different ones. So I take a snapshot whenever I do different things and I can move between them. So I can go to the clean install, or I can go back to the latest, I can go anywhere in between. So for our machine, simply click on take here, and I like to say clean install. That way we always have a baseline snapshot to go back to where it's at its default install state. So anyways, that's gonna conclude this video. Hopefully this was fairly straightforward and fairly easy. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you guys at future videos. Take care.